Hi, this is Tamara from MooglyBlog.com, and in this video, I'm going to be demonstrating how to crochet the Santa Cloth Crochet Dishcloth, which is a free pattern that I designed for yarn inspirations. To make this pattern, you'll need Red Heart Scrubby Cotton in the cotton colorway or white, Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie in tan, and Red Heart Scrubby Smoothie in cherry. You'll also need a USI 5.5 millimeter crochet hook, or whatever gets you gauge. This is a pretty simple pattern made primarily of single crochet stitches. So let's go ahead and get started on it together. To begin our Santa cloth, we start with the Red Heart Scrubby Cotton in white or the cotton color way. So I've put down a little piece of paper here so it's a little bit easier to see our stitches. And this can help with you for you too. This, as you can see, is a very textured yarn. So it is a little bit harder to see your stitches. So putting down a different colored piece of paper or something on your lap or using bright light like I have right here in front of me will also be a really big help when you're working this section. So to begin, I've got my slip knot on my hook and I'm going to chain 22. Now, these, as I said, this is a very textured yarn. It's a little rougher here. So you want to make sure to chain these stitches a little bit loosely so that you can easily find your way back into them after you've got your 22 chains made. So after you've made your chain of 22, then it's time to work row one. What we're going to do is work one single crochet in the second chain from the hook and then each remaining uh, chain to the end. So we want to make sure to skip that one. And if you look closely, despite all that fuzz, you can just see those V stitches. Now, when I work into my starting chain, I like to work into the back humps rather than the top Vs, but especially with a textured yarn like this, you should absolutely work into it however is most comfortable for you. It might even be through just the back loop only of that chain. Whatever feels good on your hook and whatever is easiest for you to find. Just make sure you try and skip, oops, keep that yarn on my hook there, and skip that first chain closest to the hook, and then you can just single crochet in each remaining chain to the end. So it, like I say, you gotta take your time a little bit, get in there with your hook, and then you can work your single crochets one by one. There we are. And if it helps, I also like to put a stitch marker in the first and last stitch of every row, especially with textured yarns like this. And also for beginners, this, since this is a beginner level pattern, you, or rather an easy level pattern, it just helps you make sure that you don't miss those stitches on either end of your row. So after you've got that first up single crochet made, then you just continue, as I say, to single crochet all the way across. So at the end of row one, you should have a total of 21 single crochets. Okay, so at the end of your first row, as I said, you should have 21 single crochets. And rows two through seven are just chain one and single crochet across, the same stitches. And as you can see, right there is how we're making the beard. So to start the next row and all the rows again through row seven here, you would simply chain one, turn, and then single crochet in the top of each stitch across. But basically, as I said, it's just more single crochets. So you just do that all the way across. However, after that seventh row, we do go ahead and break color A, which is our fuzzy white scrubby cotton, and move on to our tan scrubby smoothie. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this out and then show you how to join the new yarn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and pretend I've worked rows one through seven and I've got my seven rows for my beard. So what I'm going to do is when I finish that seventh row, is I'm going to go ahead and cut my yarn and then you can secure that first end by pulling that tail right through that chain, like so. Give it a little tug and that will pull it down. Then I'm going to go ahead and turn it over so I can have my turn there to work back the other direction. Pull my tail ends out of the way here. Then I'm going to go ahead and pick up the tan yarn and I'm going to find that first stitch and insert my hook under both of those loops. Then I will yarn over with the tan yarn pull that loop up and through and yarn over and pull that through. And then when I pull down on that tail, that gives me a nice secure connection and I can go ahead and continue with row eight. So with row eight, again, it's just single crochets, but unlike the rest of the rows of this pattern, it does have one other feature. Let me pull the finished cloth back up here. You can see it's all single crochets throughout except for this cute little nose. And to make that nose, we'd make a bobble. So we single crochet in the first 10 stitches, then make a bobble in the next stitch, and then single crochet in the last 10 stitches, because as you remember, we had 21 total. So I'm going to go ahead and work my first 10 single crochets here. I've got my chain one, so I'll go right back in that first stitch, 
for my first single crochet. Get the iron, there we go. And there's a two and three and four. And I'll let you go ahead and get your 10 made here too. Okay, so after you've made the first 10 single crochets for row eight, then it's time to make the bobble in the 11th stitch. To make a bobble, we're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, there we are, and stop with two loops left on the hook. Then we're going to do that four more times. So we yarn over, go into that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and now we stop with three loops left on the hook. Yarn over again, go into that same stitch, yarn over and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now we have four loops on the hook. Yarn over, go into that same stitch again, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and now we have five loops on the hook. You can see we've made four double crochets except for finishing them off. We've got one more to go. So we yarn over, go to that same stitch, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two, and now I have six loops left on my hook. The first one we started with and one at the top of each of those double crochets that we began but didn't quite finish off. So let me pull up a little bit more yarn here from my skein. To finish off our bobble, what we want to do is yarn over and pull through all six of those loops on the hook. And you'll see that all my loops here have stayed pretty tight. We want to make sure that as we work our bobble, we keep our stitches relatively tight on our hook. So I'm going to yarn over, and before I pull through, since I'm pulling through a bunch of loops, I'm going to point the hook of the pointy part of my hook, if you will, the hook of my hook, down towards my work, down at the bottom of this stitch. And that will help keep it, hopefully, from getting caught on any of those loops. So if I pull up on those loops, as I pull my hook through, you can see it just pulls through a little bit more smoothly. Now I've got the top of that uh, stitch nice and tight, but to make it pop out like a bobble, what we need to do is fold it towards us. So we bring our hook sort of to the back of the bobble, like so. And then we want to put a single crochet right in that next stitch. And as we do that, let me find that stitch here. There we are. As we do that, we want to keep that loop again on our hook really nice and tight. So I'm gonna pull that up and through. And again, make sure I push that bobble out towards me and then I'll yarn over and finish that single crochet. And by making that single crochet in the next stitch nice and tight, that's how we get that great pop out on our bobble right there for our nose. After that, we simply again, continue to single crochet all the way across. So again, at the end of row eight, you should have a total of 21 stitches. And you, when you work back across it for row nine, you'll just work in the top of each stitch and work right in the top of that bobble just as you would any other stitch. After that, this pattern is all single crochets, all up until we get to that loop at the top. We just change colors a few more times. So we had rows one through seven in the scrubby cotton. Then we had rows eight through, I believe it is, let me just double check here, it would be eight through 14 in the tan. And then 15, 16, and 17, again in our scrubby cotton for a little brim there. And then the remainder of the rows through row 24 here in the red for his cap. Then after row 24, again, these are all just single crochets, just like we've been making before, we have our hanging loop, which is just a fun little optional thing if you like to have a hanging loop here, and it sort of creates the little bobble on his hat. So I'm going to set this aside and we'll pick this up here, and let's pretend we're at the end of row 24. Again, it's just a single crochet row, it would be in red, but same thing, we've worked all the way across in single crochet. So at the end of row 24, we're going to do the chain for our hanging loop. And in the instructions, it says to chain 10. But I wanna tell you, you can make this chain as long or as short as you like. It's really just a matter of how big a hanging loop do you like to have? Where do you want to hang it? So these are decisions you can make for yourself for your own project. Just have to put a number of some sort in the pattern. So I'll go ahead and make the 10 called for. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Looks like I've got a couple more here. Eight, nine, and 10. I'm not worried about working back into these chains, so you can make them as loose or as tight as is comfortable for you. Then I'm simply going to slip stitch back in that first chain to create our hanging loop. 
like so. And I just go right into that back hump of it right there. Or you can go into whatever part's comfortable for you. There we go. And so we've made our little loop. So after that, we can go ahead and break our yarn. Again, this would be the color A for our hat. But on our little swatch here, we're just working with what we were at. So I will go ahead and secure that by pulling that end through. Then I can weave in that end with the rest of my ends. And then to create that fuzzy white bobble, of course, we just go back to our scrubby cotton here. And then we can join with this color with a slip stitch at the base of the hanging loop. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull on that end there as if I've already woven it in. It would probably be a lot easier to weave this end in before we start this part. But what we want to do is find the base of this hanging loop. So right there is kind of where we were starting from, or you could even attach to that first, or rather the last stitch of row 24 if you prefer, whatever looks good to you. I'm just gonna go ahead and go right in there and join with a slip stitch. The fuzzy yarn does take a little minute there. There we go. So that's nice and attached now. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to work 20 single crochets around this ring. So I'm not going to be working into individual chains. I'm going to go right into the center of that ring with my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, and just yarn over and pull through for a single crochet. And the reason there's so many, there's 20, is because we really want to cover this ring. Again, 20 is kind of an arbitrary number, it's what worked for me, but if you would like to add more stitches for a fuller pom-pom on his hat, or if you found that you made 18 and your whole ring was full and you couldn't fit two more on there, it's totally fine. We just wanna create a really good coating of white around that ring for our hanging loop. So here again, you can see that hanging loop and I just covered it as well as I could with the white. Again, if it takes more or less than 20, it's totally fine, just whatever looks good to you. Then after weaving in that end, you can apply some little eyes here if you'd like. I just used a little bit more of the, uh, the Red Heart scrubby cotton and a yarn needle and just embroidered them right over my stitches. I, in order to be able to center them or either make them look good on both sides, I sort of counted them out from the nose to line them up, but you can sew on eyes in whatever style you like. And that's how to crochet the Red Heart Santa Cloth Crochet Dishcloth. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll give these yarns a try. They're a lot of fun and as you can see, can be a lot of fun to create some great effects with. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to like and subscribe.